Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, I trust that you are feeling bright and blessed this morning, alive in Jesus and in your commitment and allegiance unto him. Now, we are continuing our look into the book of Job, and we are in chapter 5 today. Now, Eliphaz is continuing his statement to Job after Job has spoken for the first time in seven days of silence, and Eliphaz is continuing his thoughts. Now, there is much wisdom in what Eliphaz is saying here, but at the end of this book, God does rebuke the three friends for what they have said. So we need to look very carefully at what it is that they do say that finds approval with God and does not meet the approval of God. And so we begin in chapter 5, verse 1. Eliphaz says, call now. Now remember, what he's talking about is the frailty of men. God places no trust in men nor angels. Men are frail and prone to sin. And so he continues that thought by saying, call now. If there be any that will answer thee, and to which of the saints will you turn? In other words, the answer that you're looking for, Job, you're not going to find in men, even in the most saintly of men. Your question needs to be to the Almighty. You need to be looking to him for answers. He says in verse 2, For wrath killeth the foolish man, and envy slayeth the silly one. In other words, if we become angry in our situation at God because we're going through these difficult times, this can be the death of us because we become so consumed by our anger, by our resentment, by our dissatisfaction in this trial that we lose sight of what the trial is all about. You see, every trial is given us for one reason. It's, it's like a test. You don't take a test to find out how much you know. You take a test to find out how much you don't know so that you can study further to learn the things that you don't know so that the next time you take the test, you're able to pass the test with a higher grade. Well, so it is with the tests that we face in life. You see, God puts us through these tests not so that we can see how strong we are, not so we can see how faithful we are, but we can see how weak we are and how faithless we are. And once we learn that we have placed our trust and confidence in other things outside of God, we can strengthen ourselves in those particular areas so that the next time we face that test, we don't fail in those areas. And so he says, I see how wrath or anger can consume and kill someone who is foolish, someone who is not looking to God for answers. And envy slayeth the silly one. Now, what would you be envying? Well, you would desire to be out of your circumstance. And that's what envy is. Envy is desiring something that you don't have. And so, again, you can become so consumed by the thought of being rid of the problem that you're in, that you're not content with riding out the storm. Let's look back at Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 14, which we looked at the other day. Remember, it says, In the day of prosperity be joyful, but in the day of adversity consider. Don't think about being out of the circumstance, but consider. Rest in the circumstance. Be content in the problem, be content in the trial so that you can learn what it is God is trying to show you. That's why we're told in James chapter 1 and verse 4, let patience have her perfect work. If you're impatient through this trial, through this test, through this painful, agonizing moment of your life, patience will not have her perfect work. But if you will rest in the hands of the Almighty as you go through this ordeal, as David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. If you're content through this time, patience will have her perfect work. 
And this is the message that Eliphaz is trying to communicate to Job. And that the Holy Spirit through this story of Job is trying to communicate to us. He says in verse 7, man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. Light a fire and watch the sparks race upwards. And so it is with trouble that comes to man. But in that trouble, we should seek unto God, verse 8. And unto God should we commit our cause. Because in verse 11, he sets on high those that be low. So in your time of suffering, God is exalting you. And those who mourn will be exalted to safety. That's what First Peter chapter 5 and verse 6 tells us. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. There is a purpose to your problem. There is a purpose to your suffering. And so as difficult as it may be, Remain true and content in that suffering, for the Most High will exalt you. Now, friends, I know how hard, how difficult it is to live out these words. And that's why we must train ourselves for the day of adversity. Think about it like this. A race car driver doesn't get out on the racetrack, have an accident, and know how to get himself out of that without much training. You see, you watch the race on Sunday maybe, but Monday through Saturday, he is out there on that racetrack putting himself into every perilous situation that he will face on Sunday, training himself how to get out of that situation without even thinking about it. It's second nature. You know, they tell us that when someone is in an accident, most often the first thing that they will do is stomp the gas rather than the brake. But if you have put yourself in that situation a thousand times over, you're going to instinctively mash the brake without even thinking about it. And so will it be for us when we go through these difficult times in our lives. We will automatically lean to God, look to God for our answer, because that's the way that we have trained ourselves. We have been living a sacrificial life unto the Lord, We've been denying ourselves the things of this life. And so when those things are stripped from us, we cling to the God whom we serve. And so, yes, when you go through these troubled times, will this be the most difficult fight you've ever faced? Absolutely. But if you prepare yourself now for that fight, you won't walk in unarmed, friends. You'll be ready for the battle that has been set before you. Well, I love you, friends. We're going to end there today. I know we didn't make it all the way through the chapter. We're going to pick up in the rest of the chapter the next time that we're together. So continue to read chapter 5. And I would encourage you even to watch this video a second time because this is a truth that needs to be planted deep in your soul, deep in your mind. Because when that day comes, this will be the first thought that flees from you. Ask anyone in an addiction. Though they have been through many classes preparing them for the day when that temptation comes, their tunnel vision is so locked in on what it is that they desire that they forget everything that they was taught in that class. Friends, don't allow yourselves to forget these truths. You're going to need them one day. You're going to depend upon them. And the only way that they are going to be there is if you feed them, if you nurture them, if you ponder them, and if you meditate on them. So don't hesitate watching this video a second, third, fourth time, whatever it takes for you to get it. Because that is the purpose, friends, of God preserving this message for thousands of years for us to glean and learn from. That we get it. Well, we're going to close there today. I'm so thankful that you're again with us today. I, I covet your prayers, friends. Know that I love you and I pray for you. And I'm so grateful that you're a part of this ministry. Now, may the Lord Jesus bless your day. May his spirit fill your heart. And in all things, all words, all thoughts, may you give him praise and glory. For he truly is the only one deserving of such praise. Now, as he wills, and until next time, I love you, friends, and I'll see you on the next video.